the Note Air 3C, there's so much power in one device. Hopefully this will help you get over that bit of a learning curve when you first power on the device. I've said before, there is a very steep learning curve with the Note Air 3C, but once you do get over it, once you find your way through the more and then more menus, there is great power here too. So I'm gonna go through some of the note-taking features in this video. I get a lot of really useful comments as well and some of the things that I want to sort of dispel here. In a previous video, I said that there was no autosave, but apparently that is an option that we can actually turn on. You can save without coming out of the document just from the more menu there. And you can also turn on automatically exporting to any cloud storage listed here. And here you can have auto save frequency. I'll turn that on to three minutes. So as I said, hopefully this is helpful because there is a learning curve. I'm still finding things out when you guys in the comments add those things in as well. And one nice thing as well is that you can access these in the cloud, either on your books account, or you can bind it to a Google Drive and you can see those. You can essentially have them every single time you exit them for it to create a PDF and then save that to the cloud or OneDrive as well. You don't get a lot of accidental presses. There isn't an issue with palm rejection, for instance. Adding pages is really straightforward. Well, if you're at the end of the document, if you press along, it simply adds a page, or you can go into the page view here and you can add a page. And you can add a page from the more menu here after any individual page that you like. You can also, from this menu, you can also move pages around or delete them. So that's pretty straightforward. So let's have a look through the tool set that you've got. You can have five different pen tools and you've basically got a pen. This is the one I use most of the time. And because this is the color version, you can choose different colors. This is pressure sensitive, but also you have different starting line widths. You have a brush, which again is pressure sensitive. And of course you can choose your different colors. A lot, of, a lot of people see that first stroke lag. And that is not because of bad latency, but that is just because by default, it actually gives the Wacom EMR layer a little bit of a rest. And the reason why that's good is because it will actually save your battery life. You also have a ballpoint pen, which has less in the way of a pressure sensitivity change or texture. And you have a pencil and you have two types now of pencils. You have one which has tilt support and pressure sensitivity for thickness, but does not change the tone. And the other one, which changes both tone with pressure sensitivity and tilt for thickness as well. This is the more advanced one now for drawing. And I'll just say, if you start drawing, you do want to turn off the Smart Scribe feature with Strike Through Erase. I'll talk about these in a moment as well. And lastly, you have a highlighter, which frustrates people because it goes in front of the text rather than once you have highlighted over something, rather than bring the text to the front, which other devices do do. The next thing to talk about is the canvas size itself. So canvas size, essentially these values refer to numbers of screens. So this is one width and one height. This is two height and one width. So now you'll see I have extra screen down here. So generally I live in just one times one, but the biggest you can go is two times two, which basically gives you just that bit more area. And you can zoom in and out with pinch to zoom, which works really smoothly. The next is layers and layers are useful for drawing, but they're also really useful should you want to like draw out a template and then be able to reuse that. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say I wanted to create myself a little template. I can then write on the layer above. And then what I could do is I could go erase all on the layer. I think it's in if I hold down here. Z erase current layer. And now I've got my previous layer, my bottom layer still untouched but I've got a blank layer above. If you look even further than this, I could also simply go ahead and just hide this layer, add a new layer, and I could work on a new layer, but bearing in mind that I haven't actually deleted anything I had in that previous layer, so that's useful. Templates you can access in here, and you can decide whether to change just the template on one page or across the whole thing. You can also add your own custom templates. For example, you can add in a whole PDF, which has many different pages. So this is now, this is my two week planner, which has been applied as a template through underneath this whole thing. So that would be useful if I were to start a new document, then I'd get that template going through my entire planner. And you can see once it gets to the end of that PDF, it just repeats itself. So now when I add new pages, I will have new examples of my bi-weekly, my fortnightly planner 
which just brings in the next day each time, which I think that's really useful. So that's a good tip there. The lasso tool is here. And once you select something, then you get this second menu here, which rather like books, you have a more menu as well, because there are just more options than you could possibly use. Your basics are cut, copy, paste, and of course you can resize or rotate. You also change the color, can you, of the pen? That's quite useful. You can turn that into a link, and you can link out to other files, other notes, or even to places online. So lots of options there. You also have a fill option. So if I draw a shape and I'll hold it down, it'll turn it into a shape. I can now fill up any closed areas with the color of my choice. So again, useful, maybe you need to set, lay out a diagram. That could be a really useful thing. Linking is also down here in the insert function here. And we get a link which we can place. Should we click? It will take me forward or back. And then they've now added this little icon at the top here, which can take you back to wherever that link came from. And so you can cycle through, I think, up to five links that you've gone through. So for quick access forwards and backwards there. This is also where they now have the audio recorder, which is very useful should you wish to record parts of your lectures or meetings or anything like this. And these are embedded in the notes, incidentally. So actually, if somebody else comes onto this same notepad, if they're linked onto the same book's account, then this will be synced through into the notes they can listen to those things as well. That is useful. You can also add images and things like this as well. And timestamps. The AI button here is generally for smart scribe. You have shape perfection, which does, once you stop and hold down, it will turn it into a perfect shape. You have the lasso recognition, so you can click lasso, but you can also just circle something like that, and it will guess that you wanted to do a lasso, which I think is really quite useful. And now you can see we're in that lasso menu up here, and also it has strike through to delete which I think that's really, really good because it just saves you having to do anything like selecting eraser or using a eraser on top here. It's a good thing. Then there's the text recognition, and this is now converting the entire page, maybe even the entire document. You can have this to do this in the background. So that might be worth having that selected on because as you can see, it's taking a little bit of time to actually analyze that. Let's go to a notepad that I actually have some more writing on and let's go ahead, text recognition in here. You can see it might take a little bit of time. I haven't written this neatly enough to get perfect handwriting, but it's not done badly. Move from straight from one to the other, but both are fine. So this is the color, I should say, sure rather than June. And this is quite quick to be able to change it. And then you could export that to use elsewhere. Just copy and paste it out or insert it as text onto your notepad. Now, if I go ahead and turn on the automatic text recognition, which is on now. And I go ahead and write something. It's still going, so it isn't immediate, but if I was to write a whole paragraph and come back to it later. So it doesn't seem to be doing it as quickly as the Supernote, for example. It has got it really accurately, so that's cool. So that's been useful to have a quick run through of those kind of basic features there of the note taking app. It is one thing that, you know, often you'll find something in that more menu that you're looking for. So really have a good look around and don't be afraid to play about with things at first. And also one firm recommendation is to read the manual. <laughs> a lot of those note taking features can work on top of PDFs as well. So get used to making notes on top of your books, get used to making notes in the note taking app and get used to using your tablet. Some more advanced things that I actually use here on the notepad. Firstly, I want to show you book notepads and book notepads are where if you're reading a PDF or any type of book, you can have a side by side notepad. I haven't got many on this because this is my second books account, but actually this is something that is really quite useful to have a notepad which actually belongs to the PDF. And you can access that in split view from the PDF as well. So that's really very useful. And that's where they live in your notepad sort of folder section here as well. The next one is search and you can search actually all of the handwriting and text in your notebooks there. So if I search for books now, I'm gonna set it off and it's going to take a long time because what it's having to do now is it's having to search through all of the handwriting, which means it's having to convert all of the handwriting first. And I won't let it sort of carry on doing this. It will take some time, but you can see it is finding folders, it is finding titles, but it is also finding all of the handwriting that you've done there as well. 
So this is something that I've used a couple of times when I've really needed to, needed to find that note. I wasn't so careful as to sort of highlight that or make that part of the title, but I really needed to find that word. And it took a little while, but I could let it do that in the background while I went off and did some other things and I came back to it and it actually found that note. And one thing about that is once it has searched for all your notepads, it doesn't need to do that handwriting conversion again. So the next time you do that, it will be a bit quicker. The next thing is exporting and you can set in your options, you can set these to automatically export each one as a PDF after exiting. And you have a sort of folder where you have sort of PDF mirrors of your notepads. And that's really useful if you want to sync that folder maybe to Google Drive, because Google Drive cannot read or you can't read on other devices the book's note file type. And then lastly, of course, there's handwriting recognition languages, which is again in your options, handwriting recognition language settings, and you can download a whole range up to 66 different languages. And I'm sure mine will be more accurate if I have it on United Kingdom. I've never once had to actually do a stylus calibration. It's always been totally accurate enough because this is Wacom EMR stylus technology after all. I hope that was useful. Please let me know if there's anything else you need to know about using notes on the books Note Every.